Hey, kids, you want some potions? That's right, today we are going to see how liquid in a recipient is done in Unity. It's a pretty cool technique to fake a potion, for example, or water inside a bottle. As you can see, I've enjoyed a lot this and made a few variations, a few more potions. I just want to say that these videos are possible thanks to my patrons, they keep the channel going and they have access to all of my projects as a reward. Alright, so let's see how we can create liquids. By the way, we need three things, a recipient 3D model, the liquid shader and then a script to control the liquid shader to create a wobble effect. So I'm using Unity 2020.3.11 with the Universal Render Pipeline and in the Package Manager I have installed ShaderGraph and that's all we need. For any recipient you will have the exterior mesh, the recipient model. I also have a cork, but what's important here is the specific mesh for the liquid which will have the shape of the recipient. I have here another example where, as you can see, I have the shape of the recipient for the liquid. As you can see, the recipient is a shell with faces inside the mesh. Ok, so that's what I have here in Unity. I only added a very simple material for the cork. It's a lit material with a brownish color for the base map. And well, for the glass, if you want to create something transparent, super simple, you can also create a lit material, set it to transparent, the surface type and then you can decrease the alpha in the color and you will control the transparency. Right, and then you can play with the metallic and smoothness and you will have kind of a glass thing going on. Now for the liquid, we want to start with a blank shader graph. We can rename it and then double click it to open it up. Now in here, in the graph inspector, the target is going to be universal and in this case the material. If you don't want light to influence the liquid, you can set it to unlit. The surface can be opaque and we need alpha clip and to side it as well. Once you get that, what we are going to do, if you think about it, if you rotate a bottle of water, you will notice that the liquid will kind of stay parallel to the ground, to the world. So we kind of want to align our liquid to the world axis, always. We can do it by subtracting the position of the object to the world position. And this outputs a vector 3, which means if we split this, we get access to the x, y and z axis. And if we connect it to a step node, which is a threshold that will return 1, if the input value is greater or equal, than the edge value. That's why we see black and white. It's either 0 or 1. And let's try with the X. It's going to look weird. We want to connect this to the alpha and we can save the shader and now we want to create a material out of this shader with a right click. And if we assign it to the liquid, as you can see, it's vertical and hollow. But if we use the Y axis, the G value of the splitted node, now you will notice that we get this horizontal cut, which is exactly what we want. And if you rotate this, you will notice that the cut will always stay horizontal. That's exactly what we want. Because it's always facing the Y axis of the world, no matter how much you rotate it. Now, this input value of the step, if we control it, we will control the fill option, basically, of the liquid. Which can be a float, a property that we can create and set it to a slider, by the way. Between 0 and 1. And connect it like this, and now... And in the inspector, if you play with this, you will notice that doesn't go below half of the liquid. That's because we need to remap this fill. We need to say that the X the zero that comes in, we need to say that it's going to be minus 1.2, for example. The y is fine, it can be 1, but the x, instead of zero, we want to output minus 1.2, and this will increase the range of our slider. Now, between zero and one, it will represent the right amount of fill. One is full, zero is empty. Great. 
And to add color to this now, we actually are going to use something very interesting. We are going to use this branch to control the color. We are going to need two colors, one for the side color and the other for the top color. And basically, if this is true, what we are going to connect here in a moment, it will be the side color, but if it's false, it will be the top color. And what we are going to connect here is a very simple thing called is front face. Is it rendering a front face, then assign the side color. If it's rendering the back face, then assign the top color. That's why we are using two-sided. So we can see the inside of the liquid mesh. Now we can simply connect this to the base color of the fragment function. If you save it, yeah, now it's black because I forgot to set the side color, for example. Let's set it to white and alpha at 100. We can also set it to HDR. Let's do the same for the top color. And now let's save it. And now in the inspector, for the side color, I'm going to select a darker blue, a little bit darker. And for the top color, I'm going to select brighter blue. Yeah, something like this seems fine. Now, as you can see, we already have kind of a liquid shader. The only thing that's happening here, or missing actually, is a script that can control the liquid according to the way we move it or rotate it. A script that can simulate a basic liquid motion. And you can find that script in the description. It's a script from Minions Art. An awesome artist. I cannot stress how awesome it is and the amazing things she comes up with. Pretty cool. So once you go to that link and download the script, make sure it's simply Wubble. You don't need the .cs. And we want to attach this to the mesh of the liquid, to the mesh that has the liquid shader. This one. As you can see, you have some controls over here that you can play with. What's really, really important is if you open up the script, you will notice that it's trying to communicate with the shader. And it communicates through two floats called underscore wobble x and underscore wobble z. So we basically need something to control the rotation in the x and in the z axis. And if we go to the shader, we have a few nodes that can do it. We want to add something here. Before we use only the y axis, we want to rotate this with a rotate about axis. In this node, the input option is for which position do we want to rotate? Well, we want to rotate the position of the object, of the vertice of the object, in the Z axis. So let's set it to 1, 90 degrees, not radians, but degrees. And if we multiply this with the said float, in this case, wobble Z, and then Connect it to this add down here. Now, if you save it and go to the inspector, you will notice that we kind of tilt the liquid, as you can see. That's exactly what we need. Look at this. It's awesome. And the shader will control this. It will kind of simulate a liquid motion. That's great. Now, we just need the wobble X. And it's the same thing. But first, don't forget to copy the name. We want to rename the reference. Remember, it's underscore wobble z. Otherwise, the script will not detect this float. And now we can copy these nodes right here. Copy and paste it with Ctrl C and Ctrl V. We don't need to repeat this position of the object. And we want to instead rotate in the X and not in the Z. We also don't need the wobble z because we want the wobble x float that we can create and then don't forget to rename the reference as well and then connect to this multiply lastly we just need to add these two together just like this and then add it down here we can create a group if you select all of these nodes with right click you can name this to wobble group Cool, if you save this now, at this point, you have pretty much everything done. We just need to fix this faces issue. This is happening to me because the liquid mesh is intersecting with the potion mesh. 
So I'm going to scale the liquid a little bit down, just like this. And now it looks perfect, cool. I'm gonna press play and as soon as you start playing with this, if I select the potion and rotate it or move it, the script is continuously updating those two variables and it seems like it's a fluid, you know, it's faking the fluid. It's an awesome result. That's pretty much it, as you can see I've enjoyed a lot this and made a few variations, a few more potions. They are all available on my Patreon page, the link's in the description, your support will help me a lot and the channel as well, it keeps things going on. I wanna say thank you to each patron, and as usual a special quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are Alak Frost, Alex Berg Jones, Ari Koftikian, Bradford Arendt, Cristobal Velasquez Vald, David Crew, David Maid Lars, Donald Thompson, Duit Tran, Goblin Plague, Hostile Mars Game, Jean Denis Paul, Jonathan Paris, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Congar Altangerel, Lianos, Matthew Shader, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Radioactive Bullfrog, Ricard Cruz, Unknown Enigma, Verisuta, and Inguta. Your support really means a lot and it's very much appreciated. Thank you guys. And thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Consider subscribing and liking. And I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.